Oh my goodness, it's so good to see you tuning in for worship this morning. It's so nice to have you all in the room. Uh, we are uh, here on week three of our new sound system and did all the things we needed to do before worship. And I just had to move my microphone and I messed Jeff up. <laughs> Sorry, Jeff. Sainthood. He is applying for sainthood. All right. Uh, Jeff, I'm so sorry. That, that was all me. It was all me. All right. Well, this is the day that the Lord has made. Yes. Is, uh, what are we going to do? It was all me. It's all my fault. Mea culpa. <laughs> this is the day the Lord has made, and I'm so glad uh, to be here with you and to see you tuning in online. Uh, our worship service this morning We'll focus again on the Ten Commandments this week. Today we're discussing the Sixth Commandment. And to get us kicked off with that, the question of the day. Who are the top three people that you enjoy spending time with? Who are the top three? Think of them in your mind. You're going to share them at the beginning of the service. Also, if you have prayer requests today, please drop them in the comments on Facebook, whether you're in the room or online. We'll get those at the end of the service and combine them into a pastoral prayer. With that, I would like to turn it over to Max Holman and the Praise Band.
may be seated. Oh, yes. Amen. Okay. Oh. I don't, I don't know what I did, it, but I know it was me because you did your job well. Yes. Let's see what happened. Okay. <laughs> We're going to have a frozen preacher this morning. All right. What shall we do? Look at that. It's like my back. It's like my back first thing in the morning. Yeah. Oh, Jeff, I'm so sorry. Yes. Check, 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 check. Okay. I'm going to wait until it's back on. Jeff, am I back up so they can hear me at home? Okay. Thank you for bearing with us. Oh, my goodness. Mike belongs on my belt, and I'm trying to get it there. Okay, kids, come on down. This is boring. Come on down. I've got something for you. And I have to say that this morning... Um, I'm really glad it's the two of you. A lot of times, here, move her back. A lot of times recently, it's been so good because we've had lots of little, tiny little kids, and I love that because they're adorable, and I love talking with them. But today, when I thought of the children's moment, I thought of something that, that is a little bit more complicated, and I said, it's going to be hard to do if we have two and three-year-olds. So I'm glad it's the two of you here this morning. So, don't look, close your eyes. Oh, here come some more kids. Are they little? Only little ones. <laughs> All right. Open your eyes. I have something in my hand that has two sides on it. Nope, nope. The point is that you cannot see both sides. Lucy, what do you see that I have? I'll show you all later in a minute. A glass frame with a circle. It's a beautiful piece of stained glass with a circle in the middle. Come on down. You have to choose one side or the other, this side or this side. We're taking sides today. Okay. So do you agree that you see a stained glass frame with a circle in the middle? And what do you see on this side? We have well, the same stained glass frame with a, with a clock and Roman numerals. A stained glass frame but with a clock and Roman numerals. Huh. Is she telling the truth? Yeah? Is that what you see? Not really, but no. It makes sense of that. Not really, but it makes sense. Would you be willing to believe them that that's what they see? Yeah. Would you be willing to believe them that that's what they see? No, stop <laughs> it. <laughs> well, I am in now. This is, this is a big illustration, so work with me. You all can see one side of it. You can see the other side of it. I can see both sides of it, right? And I can see that you're both telling the truth. We have a piece of stained glass with a circle in it, and we also have a piece of stained glass with a clock in it, right? Sometimes, if we're sitting in different places, we see different things, right? I, I see this is on perspective. It is on perspective. Okay, smarty. What am I going to talk about then? <laughs> What's tomorrow? No, you do it. I love it. I love seeing kids develop the culmination. What is tomorrow? It's a holiday. What's it called? Columbus Day. Columbus Day. What is it called? Indigenous Peoples, Indigenous Peoples Day. Oh, you see what I did there? Indigenous Peoples Day is sort of a new term to call this holiday the second weekend in October, right? It's, and it's something that we've been doing recently so that we can recognize that there are two perspectives on what happens right? Many, many years ago, right around here. Two perspectives on what happened. And sometimes people get upset and they say, well, that's, you know, that's always been Columbus Day. I don't like that change. But what we're saying is that if you have a different point of view, you tell a different story, right? But God can see this side and see this side and love you very much and love you very much, right? And you can do that all together, even though we do view things differently. So,
tomorrow on the holiday. I hope that you celebrate both Columbus Day, which, I mean, Columbus, amazing explorer. Have you studied him yet? That guy was so brave, I actually think he was crazy. Like, seriously, what he did is monumentally brave. But also, there were people here living here that experienced Europeans coming here. And that's another side of the same story. So that's why it's so important when we study all sorts of things, to study different perspectives. Because God sees them all, and God loves us all. Okay, sorry to be boring, <laughs> Miss Yanni. Um, <laughs> So I'm going to pray with you, and I think all of you are going off to Sunday school. Anybody going to the nursery today? Anyone feeling childlike? No. Childish? No? Okay, Becca, you can have a break. You can hear a great sermon. (laughs) All right, let's pray. God, we thank you for these girls this morning and pray a prayer of blessing over their lives. We ask, God, that you would help them to appreciate different perspectives and to love people on different sides of different ideas. God, Help them as they grow and keep them safe. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Is it on? That's better. Today we have two scripture readings. The first one is from Exodus chapter 20, verse 13. You shall not murder. The second is from Matthew chapter 5, verses 21 through 24. You have heard that it was said to those of ancient times, you shall not murder, and whoever murders shall be liable to judgment. But I say to you that if you are angry with a brother or sister, you will be liable to judgment. And if you insult a brother or sister, you will be liable to the council. And if you say, you fool, you will be liable to the hell of fire. So when you are offering your gift at the altar, if you remember that your brother or sister has said something against you, leave your gift there before the altar and go. First be reconciled to your brother or sister, and then come and offer your gift. This is the word of the Lord. Oh, mm, good. Thank you, Bob. And I want to acknowledge this morning Benga Preventer, who's playing on the drums for the first time this morning. Thank you, Benga. Our, uh, our drummer of late has gone off to college, even though he's making a quick visit this weekend because he wanted to hear some good preaching, right? <laughs> or something. Yeah, that's it, Mom. Um, and so we've had Calvin, and Calvin is away, so Benga, we're glad to have you. The question of the day today is, who are the top three people you like to spend your time with? Let's have a word of prayer. Lord God, thank you again for this moment and this place and these people and the room and tuning into the broadcast. Thank you for this community, Lord. It gives us encouragement. It gives us connection. gives us love and support. God, it embodies your love of us, this community. We ask that you would use this time, God, to speak into our lives and help us to hear something from you. And help us to leave here with that word, God, a little bit more like your son, Jesus. We pray in his name. Amen. Okay, who are the top three people you like to spend time with? If you think you're going to make the person next to you mad, you don't have to say. (laughs) But anyone want to share? Who is it? Everyone's worried about making people mad. Aw, my parents with each other. Yeah. Linda, Linda, Linda. Partner, partner, partner. That's really a smart answer. But so many of these folks. Anyone else want to? Yes, George. Um, My wife, Chuck, and Kevin. Kevin. Wow. (laughs) Very specific. One in this room. (laughs) Good. Blushing a little. Anyone else want to share? 
a relationship, maybe a best friend. Uh, for, for me, one of my more favorite people I don't get to see very often, but boy, do I love to be around her. We live far apart now. Oh, oh and Sam, of course, of course. And Linda. <laughs> Indeed. All right, well, I hope you are thinking of those people in your heart. We'll get back to them. So for 10 weeks uh, this fall, we're covering the Ten Commandments here, uh, studying them in reverse just because that's fun and we like to mix it up a little bit. We started at the very end with the Tenth Commandment. You shouldn't covet, shouldn't want what your friends have, shouldn't want to take it. You should be happy with what you have. Then we talked about not bearing false witness. Sometimes we say don't lie, but we talked about the nuance there, not speaking about someone especially harmfully unless it is true firsthand knowledge, false witness. Then we talked to Dee, preached a great sermon on not stealing, not taking what is not yours. Last week, I preached the scariest sermon of my life on not committing adultery, not committing adultery, right? On honoring intimacy with the protections of a covenant. That's how we talked about that, covenant marriage. So that's great because these are all things that apply, I think, those, those four concepts apply to every single person in this room, or will when you get a little bit older. Some are a little young, maybe for adultery yet. <laughs> but all of them are the human condition, right? We all want what we don't have, uh, either by just wanting it or, or trying to take it. We've lied, right? Many of us, all of us adults, humans, struggle with lust and desire and seeking to go outside the covenant relationship we have. This is, this is the universal human condition. So now we are at number six, you shall not murder. How are you doing with that one? Is that a struggle for you? I'm really hoping, really hoping it's not a struggle for you. And so I'm thinking to myself, gosh, we went from like generally applicable to all humanity to, oh my gosh, when someone murders someone, it actually makes the news because it's a really, really big deal. And it's very rare. So what are we supposed to say about this? Lord, this one does not apply to most of us. Why did you include it in the top ten? Dee and I, as we preach this series, are using a study on the Ten Commandments that was written by a woman named Eugenia. Does anybody know an Eugenia? Really, I'm asking. Does anyone know anyone named Eugenia? Really? Do you know more than one? Okay. <laughs> I, was, I thought, who is this Eugenia? And I went and looked. She's a Presbyterian pastor in Central California. And she wrote this study about six years ago. Um, and she's been a pastor for about 30 years. A very skilled Bible study writer, Eugenia, whose mom named her after Grandma Eugenia, apparently. So Eugenia gives some really um, in insightful tips. And on this one, she says, did you know that the original hearers of the Ten Commandments also did not commit much murder? Most people don't. So why is this in there? What does it mean? Maybe we need to explore just a little bit more the, the Hebrew, the original word, when it says murder. And in fact, in your mind, you may be thinking, I thought it was thou shalt not kill, right? Already when we define murder, we're starting to be more specific and more nuanced. She defines murder as taking someone's life because of malice or hatred. It's getting even more specific, okay? Taking someone's life, taking away their future because of malice or hatred. And that first part of the definition is really important because if we do that convenient shorthand, thou shalt not kill, people who are charged with the responsibility of managing life and death situations by profession immediately start to struggle. I remember speaking to a Vietnam veteran about this one time. Have I violated one of the commandments because I saw action in Vietnam? For people who are military, people who are medical professionals, people who are public safety officers, all of us, all of us corporately have entrusted to them life and death circumstances, right? That's something we've said, thank you for serving in this way. We, you have that responsibility from, for, from us and we understand that sometimes in the course of their work, there is loss of life. The distinction here is the malice. The malice. 
And in fact, we see and hear of really sad cases where people in those positions of authority that we've given to them, we've we trusted them with, have violated that and seemed to act out of malice, and those are called war crimes, right? So there's a distinction. Uh, so just that quick word, taking someone's life, taking their future out of malice. The second thing that she says that helps us is that the Hebrew word for murder can also be synonymous with break, bruise, crush, batter, or shatter. Break, bruise, crush, batter, or shatter. Do not break, bruise, crush, batter, or shatter someone's life, literally to the point of their death, but also do not do this to their self-image. Do not do it to their joy, to their hope, and to their vision of the future. Do not take away someone's future because of the crushing power of your words. Destroy their future life because of the damage of your words. This commandment moves from very, very specific to those who are actually thinking of committing murder, again to all of us now when we realize that it encompasses the words that we speak. That's what Jesus was getting at when we heard the reading Bob gave us uh, uh, he, when Jesus comments on this. He says, if you say you fool, you will be liable to the hell of fire. If you say you the words, if you use words in a way that crushes and damages and destroys people, you are violating this commandment. Okay. I wonder if you've ever known somebody like this. The, um, the summer that Sam and I met, I've been telling lots of stories from like 25 years ago. I got to get some new stories. Well, I think they're at a safe distance. I think that's what it is. Like I'm not committing libel anymore or something like that. <laughs> but last week I did too. Uh, when Sam and I met, the summer we met, we were working doing an internship for pastors at Yosemite National Park. And uh, during the week, we worked in a dining room. And this, if anybody has been to Yosemite, a lot of people like to travel there. Um, it's in the southern part of the park, Wawona. This beautiful old uh, white wooden frame uh, hotel. Very grand. If, if anybody goes to Block Island, like my friend Bob here, it looks a lot like the National Hotel, very much like the National Hotel of Block Island. Huge old white frame building, and it was built as a stagecoach stop for horse and, um, and carriages coming into Yosemite Valley. Stop there overnight, come all the way up the mountain, stop in Wawona, and then go down into Yosemite Valley. So they have stables there, and they do horseback riding, and it's sort of like old-fashioned feeling. So we work in this dining room with these beautiful old wooden carved chairs, and I had to wear, uh, I was a busser in the restaurant, so to wear a skirt down to the floor. Imagine busing tables literally to the tops of my shoes, a black skirt and a um, tuxedo top, and you'd tuxedo top also. Sam was the host, and I was like, Maybe I'll get to bus tables near the host stand tonight. <laughs> and um, we had this manager, and her, she's about, her name is Joyce. It's been long enough, I can say. About this tall. She's really short, close crop brown hair, and wore it kind of spiky on the top. Kind of matronly, you know. She smoked, so she had a really, like, deep, gravelly voice. And she just had this way of just, boom, just a little short comment, but like popping your balloon. Every, you've known somebody like this? I remember one time I was late to work, and I was like, I didn't have time to take a shower. I mean, it's Yosemite after all. You're like going hiking and looking at nature and things. And I was running behind, and I thought, oh my goodness. And so I tossed my hair up. It was pretty long. Toss it up on top of my head in this like whimsical cute bun, I'm thinking. Like that looks windblown and you know, winsome. And so I get to work thinking maybe I look cute even though I haven't had a shower. And she looks at me and she says, well, we're looking comfortable today. <laughs> like, maybe you want to go check the mirror? I was like, oh, gosh. You know, like, I, I tried. 
Or like you, Sam, you were remembering, like working a catering event, and this is when Sam was 21 and extremely innocent to things like wine and beer, and working a catering event and went to go pick up the wine, she said, get those bottles of red and those bottles of white. And so he runs off with a friend, the other guy's the same age, no life experience yet, and there's a big bucket of ice, so he sticks all the wine, the red and the white, into the bucket of ice, right? And he goes off. See, how knowledgeable are you all? <laughs> Huge laugh on that one. Okay, um, you know the problem with that? Okay, good. So pushing the, pushing the cart, the ice bucket, and they walk in. Why is the red wine on ice? Gentlemen, have we left our brains at home today? Right? You know somebody like that. And we just talk, you know, because we're around here a lot, most days, and I remember standing out on the porch, just like at the National Hotel, beautiful big uh, porch where you could dine, and it was slow morning, and we put these little butter dishes out for, like, breakfast service, like, little bowl with, you know, the butter pats that are wrapped in, like, silver foil. And so you stick them out there on the table, but there were all these jaybirds around. And so the jaybirds would see the shiny butter, and they would hop up on the table and grab it and fly away. They did it all the time. It was super frustrating. Like, jaybird, I got And I remember standing there one time just waiting for something to do and seeing the jaybirds steal the butter pat. And I thought, that is just like Joyce. You know, she just comes in, she steals the nice shiny thing. You know, like I'm the, I'm the bowl of butter. She steals my shiny stuff. So you've known somebody like that, right? Who would just... <coughs> like we were only around her for that summer, for those, those three weeks. And seriously, like now as a more mature adult, like hopefully she had a happy home life. You know, that's, it's kind of sad. Where's all that coming from? But um, so we didn't deserve that. We were only around her for three months. But it was really draining. It was really a drag. And what if we were working there all year round? What would that do to our self-esteem, our vision of what we're capable for, what we can do in the future, right? Just crushing that, crushing that. So maybe you've known somebody like that, and hopefully you've been able to stay a little bit far away. But what if it's somebody that really has a lot of impact on you, like a partner or a parent? or a close friend that you think is your friend, but somehow they always do that. Somebody who's really has a lot of impact in your life and is just crushing you. That's really destructive, really destructive. Maybe some of you know what I'm talking about. So for every one of the Ten Commandments, when there is a don't or thou shalt not, it implies a do instead, right? So on this one, when we think about those crushing and, and future compromising things that people say to us, there's a do. Do heal with your words. Do build up with your words. Do give a vision, a hopeful vision for the future. These are the things you can do, the opposite of destroying. You can build up and you can heal. And here, because I am in debt, to my mother right now, because I made a bad joke about you a few weeks ago. I still feel bad. <laughs> still feel bad. It's a sermon about the shoes illustration. So here I would like, George remembers the shoes. <laughs> here I would like to say, this is something you did really, really well. When I was a little girl, man, this, she's the number one cheerleader. That's where I learned it. Just, you're good at that. You're so good at that. Good job. I, you do great at that. Wow. You know, and just built me up and gave me this vision of the future. Like, who knows if I would be standing up here if I didn't believe these words that my mother spoke to me. You're so good in front of people. You're so poised, you know. Like, what good words, right? So thank you. Oh, <laughs> oh see? Right? You can build up, and it has this really big impact. Parents, are you listening? Right? Bosses, supervisors, managers, are you listening? Spouses, are you listening? You can really transform someone's vision of who they can be if you can speak those life-affirming words. Have you been that person who shot off that remark and thought, <laughs> I finally put them in their place, that little jerk? Oh, man. Don't do that. Don't do that. 
use this instruction, this sixth commandment that feels like it has nothing to do with us, to apply right into your mouth and your tongue. Do not crush, but build and give life. It says you shall not murder. More specifically, do you should not take someone's life out of malice. Who are the top three people that you like to spend time with? Think about them again. I hope and I bet that those are people who speak life to you, who speak hope and vision and encouragement to you. Listen to me. If they're not, pay attention to that. That's not a healthy relationship. These are the people who, if it's healthy, do a great job of giving you life and hope for the future as we seek to not only not murder, um, we also seek not to crush with our words and instead to build up and to give life. Amen.
Okay. Well, we have time for a few announcements. The first one is that now is time for our offering. And so for those in the room, there is a table out in the foyer and a plate. There's also a QR code you can use uh, to give online. Uh, there's a link in the Facebook comments as well that allows you to connect and give. And we just appreciate your support so very much um, for this ministry. While you're on that link, in case you did touch that link uh, that you found, uh, next Sunday is our Walk for Aldersgate. This is our big fall fundraiser. And next Sunday, when we meet for worship, we're going to be here just for a few moments. We're going to sing. Uh, we're going to pray. Maybe a few announcements. But we're going to go on a walk down to Ipswich River Park and back. It's about a mile. We'll be doing that uh, in taking walk sponsors, uh, asking our friends to donate money to the church. And just to incentivize that, every $10 that they give, they get entered in a raffle. And the raffle basket is worth over $400, and it has gift certificates for food and gas. It has beer, wine, uh, maybe a few little of these thingies that you go scratch scratchy on, a nice soft blanket. Yeah, all the sort of things that people like to get. So it's a great prize. You can ask your friends, sponsor me because I love my church, and or you can say to them, hey, there's a raffle. Whatever way you do it, I don't care. We're doing a fall fundraiser. So please share that far and wide. Um, on that donation link, there is a category walk for Aldersgate. Related to that next week, not everybody is going to want to take that one-mile walk down to Ipswich River Park. If you know that you do not want to walk, please come anyway. We are having a really nice coffee hour at the end, and we need people to actually help put together that coffee hour. So if you don't want to go on the long walk, you can still be part of the team effort by getting up in the kitchen, following instructions that Sally Meredith gives, um, things like that, and, and you'll be a big help to the team. So please speak to Sally, right? You, yes. Okay, after the service, if you want to help with that coffee hour. I think we're even going to have, like, appetizers, like hot appetizers and things, right? Yeah, it's going to be a good one. So that is all for next week. Fundraise, please, during the week. There was an email that dropped uh, that sent you some success stories that people have had uh, asking their friends to donate. So um, please be a part of it. So, oh, another announcement is that um, on Saturday, October 29th, from 10 to 11, in this space, we are having a trick-or-treating event for preschool-age people from the Little Treasures and from our own church. The announcements for that are in the email, and the link is dropped if you want to register and bring your little one, or if you just love Halloween and you want to decorate a table and be around a lot of really cute kids, um, have some candy out, please host a table. Uh, we need the room full of tables for the children who will come. When the service ends today, uh, after there's there is a little coffee hour out there. We have a two-minute rule. Say hi to someone whose name you don't know. There is someone in this room whose name you don't know. I know this. So because there's someone in this room whose name I don't know. And if I don't know someone's name, <laughs> so say hi to someone you don't know. And then we're stacking all the chairs today to go out of the room. Eight high. So if you want to help with chair stacking, thank you. I think that's all of the... Enough drop, which means that DCIMAC is free to come forward, please. One more announcement. I sort of told her I was going to do this. Sort of. Hello. Sort of. I would like to invite DCIMAC to come to the front. I have a script. I would like you all to know, many of you know that Dee has been pursuing certified lay ministry through the United Methodist Church. She's been taking a lot of courses, mostly online, almost entirely. Almost. Yeah, and that's been a gift yeah. to be able to do them online. Um, she has received a certification in advanced Christian studies with an emphasis in Wesleyan studies from the Wesley Academy for Advanced Christmas, uh, Christian Studies, which is out of Wesley Seminary, where I went to school. And she's completed six required courses exploring different dimensions of Christian faith with an elevated rigor with teaching for some of the world's leading Christian scholars. These were, uh, two of these were eight-week in-depth studies in Methodist identity, its history, and its doctrine. Dee, congratulations, your certificate. <laughs> you know what? You can do that too. 
You can do that too. It's online, people. Before COVID, they used to make you travel to like Worcester for these classes every Saturday. It was awful. But now you can do it too. All right. Thank you for sending in your prayer requests. Please stand with us for our last song. That better be God calling. <laughs> Please stand for our last song, I've Got Peace Like a River. I've got peace like a river. 